Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com. I just wanted to respond to some of the comments left on my Ryan Braun video from yesterday. Um, a viewer wrote that the tester who collected the Ryan Braun sample actually put the sample in a Tupperware container. You know, let me just say this. Um, understand that whether he put the sample in a Tupperware container or in uh, some other container, understand that the container is not suddenly going to convert regular testosterone to synthetic testosterone. Um, that just doesn't happen, right? There are reports that the um, sample was put in a refrigerator, but even if it were put in Tupperware, that wouldn't have caused the positive result. Let me also make the point that, um, you know, the package was actually sealed three times with tamper-proof sealing, right? Not only was his sample sealed, but the sample went inside a container which was sealed, which then went inside the um, package, the mail package which was sealed. There is no evidence none whatsoever that any of these tamper-proof sealings were tampered with, right? None. You know, another viewer uh, chimed in that if Ryan Braun could win on procedural grounds, then why would he challenge the substantive part of the uh, test? Well, let me just say, you know, Ryan Braun made the arguments that he needed to make, right? The way lawyers operate is uh, they make all the arguments. If the court wants to pick argument A, great, then you win. But your brief would also contain argument B and argument C. In other words, it really strains credulity for someone to say that there are these other problems, tampering, for example, with the uh, specimen, and that bronze lawyers would ignore those other problems in their arguments to the arbitrator, right? Whatever problems that Ryan Braun saw with the testing of his sample would have been raised in his briefing. I think it speaks volumes that the briefing apparently did not address the accuracy of a test, nor did it address tampering. Apparently the argument's only a chain of custody argument, and even the chain of custody just talks about the failure to deliver to Federal Express, right? It uh, doesn't, you know, have any evidence of any third party getting the sample, none whatsoever, nor do they reference any evidence that the tamper-proof ceilings were violated in any way. You know, finally, another viewer um, stated that Ryan Braun's people actually offered to take a DNA test to prove that the urine was not Ryan Bronze. You know, we need to be careful here in believing propaganda and hype PR offers. You know, it's my understanding that Ryan Bronze people then withdrew that offer. Now, whether or not Ryan Braun, you know, uh, had his ban reversed, and I understand Major League Baseball is thinking about appealing that in federal court. But whether or not he had his ban reversed, understand he is a public figure. He is the reigning National League MVP. So if, in fact, a urine test would conclusively show that it's not his urine, why hasn't Braun, even if he's won the appeal, demanded the urine test? Because that would go a long way to establishing 
that something very wrong happened. If it's truly not his urine test, then why wouldn't he follow through with the DNA testing? You know, doesn't he have a brand that he's trying to protect? You know, uh, finally, let me just state this. No one seems to dispute the fact that the sample at issue has not only too much testosterone, but synthetic testosterone, right? And so let's think this one through, you know, once you get to synthetic testosterone, you can't argue that you're just a dude with a lot of testosterone, right? And keep in mind, the ratio is completely off the page. It's something like five to one. So I've received correspondence where people are saying, hey, well, how could he pass these other drug tests? You know what? The Brewers just got in the playoffs. Now, let me just throw a disclaimer. I don't know whether Ryan Braun was juicing or not, but I do think it's reasonable to speculate that if an athlete were to juice, then the time to juice would be in the playoffs. He was randomly tested after game one of the National League Divisional Series. Very high profile series Sometimes athletes play Russian roulette, right? Floyd Landis was busted at the Tour de France. Sometimes players will say, okay, this is the big event. This is the event that I need that edge in. I don't know if Ryan Braun did, but let's just say the fact that an athlete has passed regular season drug tests doesn't preclude that he might be juicing for the playoffs, right? I don't, I don't think because you pass one drug test, it necessarily follows that you have never used drugs or will never use drugs. So um, I thought it was ridiculous when Ryan Braun's side, before baseball, files its appeal, declared victory, and that Braun would say that his name has been dragged through the mud. I think the fans, quite frankly, need to figure out how synthetic testosterone got in the sample at issue, right? Either it came from the athlete or it came from Major League Baseball. And either scenario is unsettling. Let me get your thoughts. I'd love to get even more comments on this issue. I think it's a big one, especially since uh, baseball seems to be trying to clean house. And here you have a reigning MVP who won the award over other deserving candidates like Matt Kemp, right? And I do think that fans really do need to know whether or not uh, this guy has gotten away with uh, using performance enhancing drugs. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Let me finally add one more thought too. you know. I'm really a libertarian. Uh, I'm a guy who believes that, you know, Mark McGuire, Rafael Palmeiro, Sammy Sosa, all belong in the Hall of Fame. But once you impose a police state on Major League Baseball, once you insist on drug testing and a public campaign where you're hyping drug testing, then the drug testing has to be effective. You can't tar Maguire, Palmiro, Bonds, and then have this guy somehow skate when, according to the sample, it contains synthetic testosterone, right? You can't have the double standard. Either it's the wild, wild west where anything goes, or it's a police state. We can't have anything in the middle where guys are getting MVP awards and then we all look the other way when their sample is deemed by Major League Baseball to have synthetic testosterone. Let me hear what you think. Leave your comments for me here on YouTube and visit us at gamblersadvisory.com and dwyersports.blogspot.com where we try to discuss these things. Thanks for watching.